Our next guest makes an interactive 3D display system that you've got to see to believe. Even the video that we're shooting now, and if you're listening on the radio, have no fear, intotomorrow.com, you can see the video of this guest and all of our guests here in Vegas as we launch our 24th year on the air. Again, intotomorrow.com, we don't want you to miss a minute of it. But even the video doesn't do it justice as much as we're showing you some cool things over my shoulder, but welcome the Chief Marketing Officer of a company called Hypervision, Kevin Gordon. Kevin, welcome into tomorrow, how you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. And you certainly get a lot of attention. Uh, we're, we're here at the Pepcom Press event, one of the uh, after hours, non-official to CES things that are more fun even than CES half the time, because we find cool things like, like Hypervision. Tell me about Hypervision and what you guys do. Absolutely, so Hypervision is an integrated 3D holographic display system. Now that sounds like this like surreal thing, yeah, but what it really- From Star Trek and the holodeck or absolutely. something. Absolutely, right? but really, I mean, to cut it down to what it is, is that we're used to looking at everything in life in 3D, but yet we look at television and uh, media in all sorts of forms in a 2D plane. Of course, we've had the kind of 3D glasses and things like that, but never really caught on because people don't want to wear glasses to see things in 3D. But now we have this unbelievable new technology that allows us to remove that 2D barrier and have something that's floating in midair where it actually dispels belief. And that's why we have jaded people at shows like CES that stand there with their cell phones for five minutes taking video because they've never seen anything like this. It's it, it literally makes you want to reach out and try to grab the letters because it's so cool. Absolutely, and, and this is why we're finding many, many different opportunities, both on you know, retailers, um, but entertainment and events and out-of-home advertising. Uh, and people who even have this for their homes. It's amazing, I, I heard, yeah. I was just going to say, I get the whole business and marketing thing, not something we'd use at home. So how would we use it at home unless it's one of those homes where money is no object? <laughs> well, you know, listen, it's still an early adopter thing from, from a consumer standpoint, but there's a lot of people who say, look, I have this great home theater, how do I, add you know, an extra element of theatrics to that. Or do some I, digital decorations for the holidays. That's exactly what I was going to say, you know, Christmas decorations in the front window, and all of a sudden, you, know, you don't have to put up all those lights, you still have the best decorations on the block. So we're finding all these opportunities, and you know, what we, we see is that uh, retailers are, are really starting to say, hey, we, we need a brick and mortar retailer needs a way to attract customers in this digital you know, world. So how do you do that? You do that by building an experience that is out of the ordinary, isn't expected, and that separates people from kind of this, uh, this sense of, uh, of reality. And that's what our device does. And the great thing is, is that you know, the one question I get is, well, okay, how do I get content for this? Well, let me ask that. So how do you get content for this? <laughs> great question. Why, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I get the medium bucks. <laughs> yeah. Well, the way is that, okay, we can prepare the content. We have an in-house agency. You can have your own agency do it, but we include a software suite called a 3D content creation tool or 3D studio that allows you with no pre like you know skills in design and no you know no abilities whatsoever to take 2D content click of a few mouse clicks and turn that into 3D content and come out with something that looks as amazing as that and and really you mentioned brick and mortar for any kind of business it seems to me you're going to get attention i mean if somebody in a mall is smart enough to have hypervision that just people walking by are going to go, whoa, look at that, that's different. And now what have you got to sell? You know, but the point, the fact is, you're getting the attention you need. Well, that's exactly right. So, you know, we're, we're working with retailers like M&M Mars. So we're in one of their flagship stores. They want to drive more people through the front door. So we're in the front window, but we're also inside where they say, hey, we want to drive traffic to a particular item or a particular floor. This helps people do that because they actually, it'll get their attention. And we work with even like out of home uh, advertisers who do bus shelters and other things like that, which are just really looking to add impact to their message. And entertainment is huge. We're right now at the number one show in Las Vegas with Chris Angel, who is using two of our big walls 
to drive, yeah, attention so in a shop. you can do this on a wall size? Yes, you can. We have, we're, we're displaying here at CES 77 units in an 18 and a half foot um, space. So just at this uh, evening press event, we're showing a smaller unit, but they can obviously be much, much bigger and money uh, is the concern, I'm sure, <laughs> right? Whatever you can pay for. Yeah, this is just a tease. And listen, money is always an object, but you know, a lot of our customers don't look at this as, okay, how much am I spending? It's what am I getting in return? And when you can increase the amount of either floor traffic or retail conversions in sales by upwards of 30, 40%, which we're finding in the case studies that we're doing, that is really the bottom line. Holographic 3D content is getting the attention and then it's up to you to sell your product because now you got their attention. Absolutely, absolutely. We're doing Are the these, heavy lifting. Yeah, exactly. Are these available yet or how soon and, and what do they cost because everybody's got to be curious about that. Right, so we're available right now in approximately 85 countries. Uh, we've actually been actively selling since CES last year. And uh, depending upon the market, I mean, it's in, you know, in U.S. dollars at approximately $1,500. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's something that um, is not going to necessarily, you know, be for your, you know, typical consumer at this point. But this is also just really early days. So, you know, the next generation, we're already integrating interactivity and um, gesture control, facial recognition, things like that. But you know, in the future, gaming, you know, watching uh, videos on this, all these things are possible. Uh, the future is, is really bright for this technology. Absolutely, and like every other technology that we've covered on the air for the last 24 years, it becomes more affordable. And that's the cool, fun thing about tech. Absolutely. New things, are, if you're the early adopters, yeah. the first on your block, you're going to pay the price but then it gets very reasonable. Look how much you can buy a 65 inch TV for now. That was literally 50 grand when they came out. So it, that's the way to look at it. Now I'm going to challenge you for our radio audience listening to describe it on the radio. So how do you do that when somebody's not able to see it yet? Okay. Again, come see it on the video at intotomorrow.com. But even on the video, you really don't get the true sense Very true. Of, of what it is. But li listen, I mean, I, I think radio and you know, I listening to, to not, not having the, the visual in front of you, you kind of can dispel that, that belief and, and it maybe it becomes easier. So I've never done this before, but let me give this a try. So imagine just this coolest, this coolest image that you've ever seen, bright, beautiful colors real depth to it and it's floating in midair and you see it floating and it's in your reach where you could literally feel as if you can reach out and just pull it in and it pulls you in sometimes. So we have content that we've produced, especially for our larger walls, where the video actually sucks you in to uh, the image. We have this park scene where you go through this gate and you feel that you're being actually transported through these, the, the, this path into the, this wooded gate. I mean, it's just incredible. And that's the type of feel that you get when you stand in front and watch it. Well, the next time, Kevin, that I see you, I want to see the Into Tomorrow logo floating in midair. And I'll bet you can do that. That's part, that's part of your pro management software, right? We can do that. In fact, it's so easy you could do it. Oh, even me. That's All right, cool. love it. What website might we direct folks to? Would it be hypervision.com? It is. It's hypervision, not conventional spelling. It's H-Y-P-E-R-V-S-N.com. Okay, terrific. Gordon, thanks for spending a few minutes with us. Keep making cool stuff. We'll keep talking about it and showing it. I hope so. Thanks, Dave. All right, it's our pleasure. Again, hypervision, H-Y-P-E-R-V-S-N.com. We'll get you there when you hit us up at intotomorrow.com, where you will no doubt run to and see this video, so you'll see just exactly what we're talking about. Kevin did a great job, I think, describing it for our radio audience. Now, come and see it over my shoulder as we bring you further into tomorrow.